Okay, we're going to set up a new virtual machine here for uNoodle. Get the IP address of SMTP2. We're going to convert that into hex as our at last octet for uh, the MAC address of Ethernet. We're going to go set up our uh, entry in DHCP comp for SMTP2 using 2B as at last octet, changing the IP address and the host name. And uh, we're going to go ahead and Restart DHCP, so those will take effect. Now I'm going to go set up our kickstart files, starting with the uh, boot. Uh, this is basically uh, copy one we already have, and uh, just has the boot string and tells it which we're booting off our uh, internal ether eth one, and uh, we're going to boot up our uh, SMTP2 config, which we'll set up here in a second. Um, We'll go set that up. Oh, we have to make a symlink uh, so that uh, the Pixie boot will find the MAC address and then know which file to load. So we're going to set that up to B again. We're going to copy one of our SMTP configs, load it up in VI, and uh, again change the IP address 42 to 43, change the host name to SMTP2. And change the internal IP to N43. Notice how those octets match up for convenience sake. These are all what's going to be installed and uninstalled. We're going to be installing the EPEL uh, repository and as long as the Remy uh, repository as well. Now we're in the uh, Zen Center here, Windows program for managing Zen. We're going to set up this uh, virtual machine, give it a name, give it description. It doesn't matter what we boot off because we're going to boot off the net, um, but we want to set it up on uh, that. Give it like a gig of RAM and add a disk, say 15 gigs on the uh, RAID 1E array on that box. Both interfaces are going to make some changes, so we're not going to start up immediately. We might let this provision the uh, disks and all that. Now we're going to go set up the network and change the MAC address, the one we set in our DHCP conf, make it simple, mostly zeros, last octet 2B, maps to 43 ASCII, decimal rather. Uh, now we're going to set the boot device, now we're going to boot off the network. Remember we're going to come back here and turn that off otherwise it'll just keep reprovisioning itself over and over again every time it reboots. So we're going to go ahead and boot this up. It's going to try to boot off the internal or the eat zero, which is going to fail because there's no DHCP on the public side. We're going to scroll down so we can see this. It's going to time out in a second and flip over to eat one. Here we go. So it found that, found the boot, found the kernel, gets the kernel off TFTP. Uh, it's loading, uh, loading the installer up now. This is where we go in and take out our uh, network boot. So next time it will boot off the network. <coughs> We're also going to go ahead and take it out of the DHCP conf just to be safe for let us know that we finished that one. Go ahead and restart that. Now here we have Fo, which is our package manager here at Unoodle. We're going to set up a couple of templates from uh, for crons and other files from various other systems. We'll check this one out. This one has a this is for cacti has a Unoodle cron, so we can monitor disk utilization. We can go ahead and add a bunch of these. Set up a basic firewall on the system. Basically allows SSH in and 10 net private network access to the box. Add that to subversion while the background it's installed in there, as you can see above. Uh, NRPE is the Nagios uh, daemon that handles uh, requests that check things like uh, load average and users. Uh, we're going to scroll through this. We don't have to make any changes just to show you that. Uh, 
you know, what kind of things it checks. It has all the warnings and critical levels in there that you could set. And we could set those per machine and uh, go ahead and add this. Uh, let's see. I might as well commit this while we have some time. Get that all ready to go. Well, it looks like our install is almost done, 80%. That's not bad. And then sudo to root and start up foe. Gives us a bunch of options. It's menu driven. Getting ready to push the SSH keys out to the box. That's the first thing we have to do so we can do everything else via passwordless SSH. Okay, so this box is going to go ahead and reboot. Nice graphical boot up. We're just basically waiting for this to get a prompt so we can kick off our faux rollouts. Okay, finally bringing up the uh, Ethernet interfaces and we get prompts. So we're going to flip that, roll SSH keys, hit yes. It's going to prompt us the first time. We have our encrypted password in the, pix in the Kickstart config, so we know the password. So now we're going to roll it again. Now that the keys are there, we can roll all sorts of stuff out to, uh, to the new box. Select this DP2. It's just going to roll through, it's going to iterate through all the hosts we select and all the packages we select and just kind of do everything we need it to do, especially the uh, SNMP config and the, the firewall, etc., etc. We're waiting until uh, SNMP gets installed so we can start configuring things while it is running. Looks like it just uh, just finished installing there. I'm gonna go set this up in Cacti. Give it a name. I'm gonna use a YN template. We only have one right now, database template, but that's good to, good enough to use for all the boxes. It includes the uh, disk I/O utilization templates. All the IO stat stuff there. Those debug things we're going to look at a little bit later once the cron kicks off and gives us some data to pull. So, the graphs are done. Oh, yeah, now we're going to add them up to Nagios. I think they're already in here, but we're just going to cruise over and see. We're just to find the host using the short name. it in a host group, SMTP, and set up some basic NRPE polling for users, load, root file system, and uh, whatever. Uh, go ahead and restart Nagios. <coughs> Our yum update is still running. Notice our uh, user works, our auto, FS, our auto mount uh, home directory is mounted from dev with our user ID. We can set up keys on our user and, and get into any box via SSH key. Uh, we're looking for that iostat file in the temp directory from that cron writes out, but runs every five minutes and it delays 30 seconds, so it's, uh, it's going to take a few minutes before we before we get that file. We're waiting for that to get the uh, cacti graphs finalized. So that's going going to run. It's still not there.
I'm going to go ahead and uh, give Nagios a poke. See what we have here. SMTP2, load user, zombie, disk root, all okay. All of this goes to my pager. And uh, so on top of everything there. Looks like that's almost done installing everything. Oh, looks like our install finished. Done with that. Still no IO stat cache. Highlighting is horrible, but that's our cron we're waiting to run. Let's see it delays 30 seconds there. Okay, we're going to add this to the web tree so they'll be easy to access. I like to put uh, servers under their heading and then add individual graphs to the uh, to the main part of the heading so they're easily accessible for this one we're going to do uh, what are we going to do we're going to do uh, load average I think now if we go and click on those we have our graphs Oops, not really updated yet but they will be and our stat cache is there let me go back and add those. Since they weren't there when we created this, we have to run through and run these individually. And for this box, we only have one hard drive, so we're just going to start graphing HDA. We don't care about the partitions, just the one disk. And we're done. Those graphs will take a few minutes to uh, populate. You can see they're empty right now. And that's it.